Okay, question number 11 from electrostatic and more precisely from capacitor. Three identical capacitors C1, C2, and C3 have a capacitance of one microfarad. And they are uncharged initially. They are connected in a circuit as shown in the figure. So let me show the figure. So this is C1, C2, C3, all of one microfarad. But the battery is there and you would see that there is a certain change which has been done. C1 is then filled completely with a dielectric material of relative permittivity epsilon r. In other words, after having done this particular operation, what would happen is, see, this capacitance would be 1 microfarad, this would be 1 microfarad, and this will be epsilon r microfarad, the reason being you have to multiply it by the relative permittivity, right? So here is that given situation. And C1 is then filled completely with a dielectric. That's done. The cell electromotive force is 8 volt. So that has been done here. Here, this given value is 8 volt. Okay, now let's see. First, the switch S1 is closed while switch S2 is kept open. Okay, first, S1 is closed and S2 is kept open. That means when S1 is closed, this is not going to get affected because this branch is handicapped here. So entire 8 volt will appear here in the form and that will be 8 microcoulomb would be the initial charge at C3 at the time when S3 is open and this is closed. Now, what is the additional change after that? When the capacitor C3 is fully charged, that's what, when it gets 8 microcoulomb, S1 is open and S2 is closed simultaneously. All right, so S1 is open and S2 is closed simultaneously. Now the battery can do nothing because this branch has been open. When all the capacitors reach equilibrium, the charge on C3, the charge on C3 is found to be 5 microcoulomb we need to calculate the value of epsilon r. Now the idea is C, I'll just draw another circuit here, and this is epsilon r, and this is one microfarad, and here initially there was eight microcoulomb, but it says after this connection has been made, let's see, the final charge on C3 is found to be five microcoulomb, right? So 5 microcoulomb, that means what I require is if this is 5 microcoulomb, then quite obviously this has to be 3 microcoulomb because the charge on this plate and this plate is conserved. They are connected. Initially, this was having 0, this was having 8. So now, if this has 5, this must be having 3. And if this is having 3 microcoulomb, this must be having 3 microcoulomb as well because the same charge would be flowing. Now, you can just equate the potential difference. So this is Q by C. That comes out to be 5. And this is Q by C. So that's 3 by epsilon r. And this is plus of 3, right? So that's a straightforward one. So I'll be getting here epsilon r equals to 3 by 2 and that value comes out to be 1.5. And in order to comply with the question paper norms where you need to write two digits after decimal, that's going to be 1.50. So that's the relative permittivity of this capacitor. Let's move to the next one. Question number 12, another straightforward question derived from the topic motion of a charged particle in magnetic field. In the xy plane, the reason y greater than 0 has a uniform magnetic field B1 k cap and the reason y less than 0 has another uniform magnetic field B2 k cap. So here the figure is something like this. The reason y greater than 0 is this B1 k cap. The reason y less than 0 entire is B2 k cap. And further, let's see what is the question. A positively charged particle is projected from the origin along the positive y-axis with a speed pi meter per second. So here is the 
positively charged particle which is projected up with a speed pi meter per second. Let's see. Neglect gravity and at t equals to capital T be the time when the particle crosses the x-axis from below for the first time. If b2 equals to 4b1, the average speed of the particle along the x-axis, not the entire average speed, but average speed along the x-axis, that has been asked. So let us see something like this. It's also been given that b2 equals to 4v1. So indicating the radius in the second field has to be less because r equals to mv by bq. And if the magnetic field is four times larger, the radius would be four times lesser. That's no surprise. So here the trajectory would be something like this. Due to this velocity, it would go somewhere here. And even it's extending till there, there is no requirement to worry. And after that, when the velocity would come there, the bending would come in this direction. So it would be something like this. That's the trajectory. And you can understand the average speed along x-axis. So the initial, if you see, the forward direction is twice times the first radius. So twice times the first radius plus twice times the second radius in the backward case. 2r, the diameter of the first, 2r, the diameter of the back, right? So that's the total distance along x-axis. And time, individually, they are taking half of the time period. So that will be t1 by 2 plus t2 by 2, where t1 has a regular meaning, the time period in the magnetic field 1. That's 2 pi m by bq. Rest, everything is a very simple calculation. And when you solve this, the value comes out to be 2 meter per second. And as per this defined format, where you need to report the value with two digits after decimal, so that will be 2.00 in meter per second. So this integer would be the correct integer for this question. Quite a straightforward one, right? All right, let's now move to the next question.